Hello again, everybody. This is Red of Half Century Collecting Sports Cards. Got a really cool issue today. We are going to talk about the all-time greatest right fielders in Major League Baseball. Now, if you're a seven or eight or nine-year-old Little League kid and you get thrown in right field, it probably means you're not all that good at baseball. But if you're a major leaguer, some of the best of all time have played in right field, which uh, you're going to find out. Um, if you actually want to skip to the end, just see some really, really cool cards. Um, go look, I guess, at the last few minutes of this video. But before that, these are just some of the guys that did not make my top 20 in right field here. And then we're going to quickly show the series that I've already gone through. I've done the all-time greatest catchers, which I gave Josh Gibson the number one nod. And there you can see the rest of the top 10. First base, I gave to Lou Gehrig. And you can see the rest of the top 10. Second base, Rogers Hornsby. And the rest of the top 10 in cards. Shortstop, led by Hannes Wagner, the great Pittsburgh Pirate. And the rest of the top 10. And third base, led by Mike Schmidt. Followed by the rest of the top 10. Okay, so that leads us to, we're just gonna show the top 20 and 11 through 20, I'm just gonna go through real quickly. Um, the top two here, 20 and 19, are just guys that I think are going to be moving up the list as they continue to play. And that is Bryce Har Harper, who has been playing first base now, so I don't know if he'll end up in right field. And Mookie Betts, who's actually played a lot of shortstop this year. But the bulk of his career has been in right field. So number 18, we've got Reggie Smith. Number 17, great arm, Dwight Evans. Who I think has the highest war of any right fielder not in the Hall of Fame. We got Larry Walker at 16. We got Ichiro at 15. Harry Heilman on that I found out to be a counterfeit card <laughs> of one of those strip cards at 14. So I still need to get a non counterfeit Heilman. We got Sam Thompson at 13. We've got the great Dave Winfield at 12. And Paul Wehner just missing the top 10. Shown there on his 36 Gaudi card. Okay. Top 10, here we come. And these, we're going to talk a little more detail about each of these. Uh, number 10 is Sam Crawford, Wahoo Sam, who played with the Detroit Tigers for a lengthy career, overshadowed by Ty Cobb, played in center, but uh, Crawford's the all-time leader in triples with 309, almost had 3,000 hits in his career, and he's actually the seventh highest career war of any right fielder at 75, Sam Crawford. All right, next we have got a more recent guy, and actually the highest batting average of anybody in the integration era, and that is Tony Gwynn, lifetime batting average of 338, and that is anybody who played their full career anyway after 1947. So Gwynn was an eight-time NL batting champion, um, also stole over 300 bases, won five gold gloves, had uh, 3,100 hits in his career. Had one year where he hit 394, 1994, and finished with 69 career war. So that is a Tony Gwynn. That's his rookie card. 1983 tops. Next we've got, try to get rid of that glare a little bit. We've got a old judge card from the 1880s, 8788 era of King Kelly. Mike King Kelly. Now, Kelly was one of the earliest superstars. He also caught a lot, but he 
is going to go as a right fielder since that was his main position for me. Um, he gets the number eight knot of all time. They called him $10,000 Kelly, which you can see on his card. They depict him as, and that's because this 1886 season, which is probably when this picture was taken, he uh, hit 388 that season, led the league. He's one of the best players, and that was with the Boston Bean Eaters, and ended up signing a record salary of $10,000 with the Chicago White Sox. You can see him pictured on this jersey here with Chicago and um, continued to have a, a real nice career after that. Um, ended up back in Boston for a while as well, but he was a big innovator of a lot of things, such as the hook slide. They ended up making a song called Slide Kelly Slide, which also actually became a movie musical later on. Um, but old judge card of $10,000 Kelly, whoever owned this card wrote in pen, on the back, uh, some of the teams that he played for in the years after that 87 season, which I actually think is kind of cool. All right, next we have got a 1954 Tops, and this is rookie card of Al Kaline. Played his entire 22-year career with the uh, Detroit Tigers. He was probably an 18-year-old from this picture, you know, from 53, and he ended up in 55 at age 20 being the youngest player ever to win a batting title when he hit 340 uh had 200 hits that season and then he just kept on going um consistently ended up over 3,000 hits in his career 93 war in his career he had 10 gold gloves he was actually pretty fast young in his career and was a 15 time all-star he ended up with uh, over 90 career war as well Next, we've got another rookie card. This is a 69 tops of Reggie Jackson. He gets the uh, number six knot on my list. He didn't end up with uh, near as many career war as Al Kaline. Uh, he ended up with 74 in his career, but he gets a big push here because of his postseason performance. Um, in regular season, he still did hit 563 home runs, including 47 in this 1969 season. Um, but in the World Series, uh, which he won four of them, was in five, he had 98 career at-bats in World Series play, and he had 10 home runs, 24 ribbies, 357 average, and a 1.212 OPS. So just great postseason performance for the number six all-time right fielder, Reggie Jackson. Now we're going to go back to the uh, 20s, 30s, and 40s for my number five guy. And that is Mel Ott, seen here in a 1933 Gaudi. Now, like Al Kaline, he played his whole entire 22-year career with one team, and his was the New York Giants. Uh, this ended up being his only title season, 1933. Uh, he was a, one of those young sluggers, even though he was only 5'9", 160 is what this card lists him at. Um, but he led the National League in home runs six times, and when he retired in the uh, late 40s, he was the all-time National League leader in home runs with 511. Um, he also was a 304 career hitter, had a 414 on base percentage, he drew a lot of walks, and he ended up the uh, third highest war of all time for right fielders with 111. Mel Ott. Okay, next we go to the 50s, 50s, 60s, and 70s for the... Uh, Guy was the first black manager, but before that, he was quite a player. This is his 1957 Topps card, uh, where he's a rookie. He was really an underrated, I think, overall player, uh, but he retired fourth all-time in home runs with 586. Uh, he had 107 career war. He was the only player who won MVP awards in both leagues, 61 in the... Uh, pennant winning season for the Cincinnati Reds and then 1966 when the Orioles won the world championship his uh, first year there with the Orioles he won a triple crown um, and also less known that he stole 200 bases in his career so Frank Robinson all right number three of all time Bring that bad glare there is a 1955 rookie card of Roberto Clemente. 
uh, uh, Clemente. May not have been the first uh, black Latino superstar. I'd give that one to Minnie Minoso, but he's the guy who took it to a whole nother level. He was signed out of Puerto Rico as an 18 year old. And he was one of those bonus babies, which means you had to bring him right up to the major leagues or he was uh, available to be drafted. And unfortunately, the Dodgers, who are the team that signed him as a bonus baby, baby sent him to the minors. They sent him to Montreal, uh, same place that Jackie Robinson started. And because of that, he was eligible to be drafted and the Pittsburgh Pirates were glad for that. They took him and he ended up spending his whole 18 year career with the Pirates, probably next to um, my number one shortstop of all time. Hannes Wagner is one of the best Pittsburgh Pirates of all time. So there you see the two together. Um, Clemente ended up winning a uh, MVP award in 66 with the Pirates. He won 12 straight gold gloves from 1961 to 1972. And... 1971 in that World Series, probably when he really um, became known, seeing on the world stage, getting all kinds of hits, extra base hits, hit over 400 in that World Series, and showed off just that tremendous arm, uh, just an incredible right field arm. Um, I know even my son has watched some of the YouTube videos of his arm, and my son wears number 21. Clemente's number for his high school team, uh, proudly in honor of Mr. Clemente. Now, tragically, at age 38, after he had just gotten 3,000 hits on the last day of the season, um, he was flying a small, he wasn't flying, but he's riding in a small airplane trying to personally deliver some goods to earthquake vi victims from Nicaragua on uh, New Year's Eve 1972, and the plane crashed, and Roberto perished in that crash um, but man was he a fun to watch player and if you watch my favorite I've been doing favorite 400 card series um, this card and his final 1973 card have huge meaning to me and you'll have to watch those series for future episodes to see why all right down to number two and this is a rookie card of Mr. Henry Aaron. Now, Hank Aaron, you could argue to be the number one in right field. I gave him the two spot. I still give him one of the top three players of all time spots. He was incredibly durable and consistent for his whole career. He, For 15 straight years, he logged over 630 plate appearances. I think that's just incredible durability. Um, he had 21 consecutive All-Star seasons. He was a top five MVP voter eight times. Um, the year he won it, 57, was his only championship season. And before Roberto Clemente had that big string of gold gloves, uh, Roberto Clemente, or I mean Hank Aaron, was the uh, gold glover three consecutive years before that. So 58, 59, and 60. Um, he had... 30 steals one year, 1963, and that was the same year he led the league in home runs, and he led the league in home runs a lot, but led the league in home runs that year with 44, uh, and RBIs with 138 times he led the league in total bases, and he is the career all-time leader in total bases, as well as being the career all-time leader in RBIs, um, and for non-steroid users in home runs, um, still 50 years after breaking Babe Ruth's record. He had 13 years over seven war, um, and those are considered MVP caliber type seasons, and had a career 143 war. That's incredible. So let's see that whole Hank Aaron 54 rookie card. Pretty cool. All right, and then number one on my list, even though you maybe could consider it a 1A, 1B type of scenario between him and Hank Aaron is Babe Ruth. Um, but I gave Ruth the number one nod because he just um, totally revolutionized the game of baseball. In um, 1919, still with the Boston Red Sox, and then more so in 1920 and beyond, he started doing something just no one had previously um, tried to even achieve in baseball, and that was hit home runs, um, something that it now is probably the number one objective of most players hitting home runs in 1919 
when he hit 29 homers, uh, breaking the all-time record. Second in the American League was 10. And that was, you know, one of three guys. But, the, you know, one of those guys who had 10 had the nickname of Home Run. Home Run Baker. And Ruth ends up with 29. The National League leader had 12. The next year, 1920, goes, you know, signs of the Yankees. And he hits 54. The second highest in all the majors was 19. Hit 54. And then he still hit 376. The next year, 1921, he hits 59 home runs. Next in the league was 24. So he's just, you know, tripling, doubling, tripling or more. The, the second highest guy in the league. Um, his high was 60 in 1927 on, you know, possibly the best team of all time that, you know, included the number three hitter there was Babe Ruth, and he was given the number three, and then the number four hitter on that team is my all-time best first baseman, Lou Gehrig. So, three four hitters, Ruth and Gehrig. So, a little more uh, about Gehrig. He won, or I mean about Ruth, he Ended up on seven world championship teams. Um, three of those were mainly as a pitcher back when he was with the Red Sox. And his 714 home runs held up as the record for 39 years until Mr. Aaron came along. Let's see them together for a little bit. Thanks, and Aaron. And his three or 690 career slugging percentage. And his 183 career war are all-time highs. So that is it. Babe Ruth. And you're going to see him in order. My best right fielders of all time. Ruth, Aaron, Clemente, Frank Robinson, Mel Ott, Reggie Jackson, Al Kaline, King Kelly, Tony Gwynn, and Sam Crawford. And there you see my next 11 through 20. So thanks for watching, everybody. Hopefully this was fun for you all. This is our last look at my all-time greats from catcher and the infield positions and then now right field. Have a great week.